After the premiere of the Sunsea Predict video, we had a couple of questions about how an alert works and could we actually show uh, a real alert on Sunsea Predict and then how we'd handle that with MeasureQuick. So let me show you over here. Um, I got a uh, support email that came in and it says support at MySensi. Um, it's going to tell you you have an alarm detected. So if you tap on that email, uh, the first thing I want you to notice is these can end up in spam. So uh, make sure that uh, if you have a spam filter that you mark this as not spam so it doesn't go in your spam again. It tells you the customer, and this one here is named Training Rig. It could be Bob Jones or whoever the customer is. Then it gives us what the alert is. So the coil is operating below freezing temperatures. Action is required to prevent possible damage to the equipment. So this is a warning on here. And uh, at this point here, we'd want to log on to uh, Sensi Predict. And I just happen to have that open in a tab here. Let me just go back one screen to the home screen. And what this is going to show you here is any warnings that you have or any um, uh, uh, problems that you have, it'll pop in on the screen. So right now I just have the training rig going. We have obviously more than one system. So I have um, Manifold Cloud Services, Bobby's house and my house. But on the home screen, this is the only warning that we have. If we have 100 systems, there could be you know a handful of warnings here and eventually those need cleared out. So all I do is just tap on this. And what it does, is it pulls up the information and I can either view live data or I can actually view it right in MeasureQuick. So again, it's showing me that I have a temperature split issue. It shows me that uh, when that came in, so at uh, 4 o'clock here, 16, uh, 1600 p.m., and a warning that the refrigerant temperature was too low. And so right here, we can do two things. I can either view it live data or do it on MeasureQuick. I'll show you the live data first. On the live data here, the temperature split's actually off the chart, so we may not see that split here, but the, the temperature sensors for our suction line, our liquid line, if we tap any one of those, we can see our, supply, our suction temp's 32 degrees, supply air temp's 33 degrees, our liquid return air temperature there. We can also look at our control line, so we can see that we do have a call for, um, oops, I'm back on the zoom here. Sorry about that. Uh, no. All right, so let me see if I can refresh this graph here. Let's just do it this way. Working on an iPad here, so sometimes it gets a little tricky. So you can see I have a call here for G, a call for Y, and a call for uh, outdoor Y1. So everything, everything's calling outside. So my inside calls go into my outside. The system's obviously running, and I can see my indoor and my outdoor current on here. So all my data is here. This is one way of looking at it, and uh, but we can also look at this through MeasureQuick. So if I go back and uh, we'll just hit uh, we'll just hit the back key here, and we'll go open this up in uh, in MeasureQuick. So it'll say starting a project with MeasureQuick, and this is really nice because a lot of technicians are sort of used to this um, this way of looking at it. So check for updates, and then what it's going to do is ask for the live stream data. I'm going to hit yes and it hit open, and then what it's doing is it's live streaming data uh, into MeasureQuick. So I can see my suction line temperature is low, my liquid line temperature is low, uh, my coil is operating uh, below freezing. This is actually using our non-invasive mode to get pressures and temperatures. And then I can go and take a look at my uh, return air dry bulb, supply air dry bulb, and then see my temperature split is really high at 30 degrees. And uh, it looks like my airflow, estimated airflow is really low right here. So if I were to tap on this, and right now the system's not stable, it'll take measure quick a second to stable, but I'll just clear this so we can see this. You can see that we have a, a, a liquid line temperatures out of expected range, uh, supplier temperatures might be in line of sight of the evaporator, airflow is low, uh, could be an overcharge. So there's a, a lot of problems here, but they're primarily tied into low airflow on the, on the system. So very similar to what we see in Sensi Predict. Now, if we go outside here, let me show you a couple other interesting things here, because I can actually pull in my electrical here, which is coming off Sunsea Predict. So we'll go ahead and leave that on there. We'll just imagine we get out to the job site. So let's go out to the trainer here for just a minute. And you can see here, I don't have any of the probes on yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and start turning on some probes for supply air. I'll get our return air probe. Um, I'm gonna get my outdoor air probe here. And this would just be like we just uh, hook these up, you know, like we're going out in the field and we want to hook these up and test, test things out. So now when I go into my 
toolbox and I turn on my fuel piece probes, what's going to happen here is that I'm going to get actual temperatures and pressures from the uh, uh, all from the um, fuel piece and the Sensi at the same time. So I can see everything that's sort of going on here. I definitely do have a low airflow situation. Uh, I know that because I have a rheostat here that I have cranked down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that back up. And this could be a dirty filter, a plugged evaporator coil. Uh, it could be, I saw one online the other day where a customer put the filter in with a plastic on it still. You know, anything like that could cause this type of a low airflow problem. And the Sensi Predict would pick that up, send you an email, notify you what's wrong, and then allow you to come out and actually do the repair. So now this thing's going through its uh, repair process. And what I'm going to do now is let it run for a few minutes, and then I'll verify that everything's back in range uh, once we have it uh, set up with Sensi. Now, a couple of things here. Obviously, our coil could be frozen. In this case here, I can see it's, it's definitely not frozen in here. Humidity's uh, pretty low in the shop here. So it's going to just take a few minutes to come back up. We've got a boiler refrigerator the evaporator coil. But as soon as this gets back up, we'll go into range here, and I'll show you again how the system would look. So everything looks uh, pretty good now. If you watch, you're going to see it's going between stable and unstable, and it's just some small readings there, but uh, everything looks good. We do have a low load on here just because it's cool in the shop here. But the last thing to do is just simply uh, tap on the project, go to measurements. I'm going to save the data. Uh, it's going to allow me to view the project and just generate my report, share and export as PDF and generate PDF and I'd be all done here. So you can see I have some of my measurements coming off my field piece probes. Uh, down here I've got some of the stuff coming off the condenser voltage and amperage coming off the Sensi. Same thing with the air handler. Makes it really handy because now I don't have to grab a voltmeter to test those things out there. I've got my tons of cooling and I've got my logo and, and basically everything's all set to go and I can email those out to the customer and I'm done. So doing a service call with Sensi Predict is monumentally easier than doing it any other way that you could do it because I came out here, I know what the problem is, I know where to start looking, and then I can go ahead and get the problem solved and then verify that it's all done and you know we're good to go. So the last thing that you would do here is I'd go into Sensi Predict and um, just go back to my, uh, my project here and then I'm just gonna clear out this fault. So down at the bottom here, I'm just gonna select um, Closed and Save and Exit and now that fault is gone and the job is done. So that's it. And if you got any questions or comments, please leave them below. But I think this gives you a good idea about how MeasureQuick and Sensi Predict work together and uh, how a fault occurs and then how we service it. This is Jim with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.